Welcome everyone to the March 4th Omar Architecture meeting. Uh, today we have uh, two topics to discuss. Um, the first is um, Jan Brownie, who wants to uh, go through some proposed changes to uh, linkage properties in the compiler. So I will turn it over to him for his uh, presentation. Jan? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. And also I hope uh, you will see uh, my screen if I share it. Uh, yes, share uh, entire screen. Share. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we can. Excellent. Um, okay, so uh, let me start it. Uh, what I'm going to talk uh, is specifically the linkage properties, not as much the whole the whole linkage. Uh, and uh, I will first go, you know, through um, uh, through the motivation behind and uh, what what is my idea, and then <clears throat> I will show you how it looks in the code uh, because I made some uh, proof of concept or experiment to see uh, how far I can go before I hit the wall, uh, which I. Uh, hit in the end, but um, we will see, and then then we can discuss whether you know it makes sense to do this or not. So, uh, from my point of view, there are few few issues in in the linkage properties. Uh, I see it as the issues. Maybe maybe it's just my ignorance, and there is a there is a reason. I don't see why it has to be the way it is. But uh, one of the problems is, uh, is there is a lot of uh, code duplication uh, among the all backends, right? So pretty much all backends except of the Z uh, use uh, linkage properties. Uh, and there is things like uh, argument registers, return registers, and index into it, uh, and perhaps allocation order. Uh, and a uh, few others. <clears throat> um, there is a lot of lot of things that are common, but they differ in different details. Uh, but uh, pretty much, a lot of the common code is just copy pasted over time uh, into uh, most, if not all, uh, all the backends. Also, there is a there is a um, quite a bit of code duplication in. Uh, uh, within the backend itself, because uh, as far as I could see, in every constructor of every linkage, uh, you set up the, the you set up the linkage properties. So you fill the values, you know, the register flags and everything, uh, and all the all the data structure you fill it in, uh, and uh, then continue. But if you look, for example, uh, for the risk five and the AR64, uh, then the system linkage and the private linkage is pretty much the same, except of one or two registers which are used for the Java stack pointer and uh, uh, the threat environment. Uh, and then, you know, you have a lot of code, uh, again, copied <clears throat> to fill, uh, fill the argument uh, return registers and so on and so forth. Uh, also, another issue, and I, I think that uh, on a GitHub there is also also issue to remove that, uh, is that the linkage properties contain some JNI specific members, uh, such as um, ah now I yeah the the method so the thread. Register yeah. actually used not for the method metadata, but for the uh, VM thread. Uh, and then uh, you know some some registers for for virtual calls and and things like this, um, which uh, I mean they don't hurt, but uh, on the other hand, uh, that's you know where the where the J9 the consumer project leaks into the into the OMR, uh, which is something that I guess. Would be nice to avoid. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, 
that um, you know the meaning of the of the properties or the members of the proper, uh, of the linkage properties uh, are well not very well documented and sometimes sometimes I uh, struggled what they really mean uh, especially on power there are few few things but uh, you know I don't, I don't want to discuss these details but uh, it would be nice to to document that a little bit uh, and this is a this is a good uh, opportunity uh, for me uh, after working with the code for a while uh, I observed few things uh, first of all that uh, that all the linkage properties I've seen um, use a uh, quite a lot of, of, of derived values so there are some you know primary values like a register of flags and then uh, you know in that you have this you know this is a, a integer argument or an integer return register like we define the roles of the register in in the linkage uh, but then there is a lot of lot of uh, values which are derived right and like the list of argument registers and uh, you know where the where the integer register starts in that list and where the uh, where the floating point argument starts in that list and so on and so forth um, and again, these these two two things, um, you know, these derived values they depend on the uh, on the definition in the ring in the register flags, but uh, they are manually, you know, the constants are manually handwritten in the code, so changing in one place um, makes it, uh, you know, you you have to you have to you have to remember that you have to change the value in the derived. Uh, structure. Mm. Also, quite a few members are common among the backends. That's uh, that's what I said before. Like that there is a code duplication there, uh, and also it looks to me that the structure is mostly read-only. So you <clears throat> you essentially fill it in, and uh, then just use it. It it never changes. Uh, so uh, from that. Uh, when I was uh, trying to do something about the J9 private linkage uh, and avoid the, avoid the duplication, uh, I got an idea that uh, we can probably compute most, if not all, derived values automatically by some code. Um, so we will just fill in the register flags and you know few few other uh, things, uh, and then let let all the other support structures. Uh, to be computed based on based on these flags. Uh, also, because this is a read-only structure, the idea was to make the linkage properties static. Uh, therefore, they are created once and not each time you uh, you instantiate the linkage, uh, which might share uh, save a little bit of memory uh, and maybe a tiny little bit of time, but. Uh, you know the overall effect on performance. I don't want to presume that you know it would make much difference. Probably not. Uh, but uh, you can do it. And uh, <clears throat> once you have this, uh, you can perhaps hoist most of the common parts to the common subclass. Then you will just extend in individual backends that need something extra. Uh, and uh, leave leave the computation of the derived values and, and things like this to to that supper class or perhaps tweak it a little bit. So that that was the idea and that that was why I was asking uh, a few weeks ago if there is some reason why that it's not done that way because it seemed to me uh, quite natural uh, and this provoked this whole uh, conversation today. Um, so, as I said, I went, uh, I went, and uh, tried some some draft of how it might look like. Uh, so let me uh, let me show you the result, right? And first of all, obviously, I write it from. Uh, I started with the RISC-V code. Um, 
I hope you see you see my eclipse, right? Yep. Okay, so here, uh, here this is uh, the Omar Elkic um, header file, uh, and normally uh, there used to be, you know, the uh, RV linkage properties structure with uh, all the all the code, but I managed to I managed to push uh, all the code up into the into the common common uh, code gen on our linkage. Um, so here I just uh, I just make an empty subclass because I reuse everything what's there. Right. So you know this this just saves me uh, I don't know maybe a hundred lines of code. Uh, and um, yeah so you basically basically reuse reuse what's there. Uh, now, uh, if uh, if if we look into the system system linkage, yes, here we go. So here uh, here I create uh, uh, yet another subclass, and I do that only so I can I can have a constructor in there. And if I go into the constructor, let me see if I can do this. Yes. Uh, so you see that pretty much all I do here is just I fill in, uh, you know, these properties, and I fill in the register flags, uh, and this is this is pretty straightforward. If you if you open the Risk Five uh, uh, Elf ABI documentation, uh, you can just virtually copy paste the definition from the from the text into this code. Uh, then you you know decide on this. Uh, we don't have a you know these JNI specific stuff, mm. and then you just call initialize. And the initialize, okay, it won't be get there because now I have this configured for PowerPC, but I I can go there manually. So that's in the code gen, and that's in the OMR linkage where I am. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> So this calls this initialize, right? And here I just <clears throat> I just compute uh, all the derived values, like how many there are allocatable registers, how many there are float registers, and so on and so forth. Uh, so if I want to make any change in the system linkage, um, for whatever reason, I just change the flags here, and uh, and that's it. If I'm about to, if I'm about to implement a J9 private linkage or any other private linkage in any other consumer project, uh, I use the same pattern. I just fill in the register flags, uh, and after that, I call initialize, uh, and it fills fills the rest. Uh, also, uh, what's uh, <clears throat> what's uh, what I changed here is that I make the properties here static. This is why I put why I put the initialization of the flags into the constructor of the linkage properties, not into the constructor of the linkage. Uh, so I can have it static, and you know the the runtime uh, will just instantiate it uh, once, uh, and then I just share it. And that's all. <clears throat> And with with that, uh, all the tests uh, that are that were passing before this refactoring uh, also pass on a risk five. Um, okay, uh, are there any questions so far or comments? Yeah, and I have a question. Um, so these linkage properties don't actually exist at all on Z. And when I look at them, um, they seem like a, kind of like a sibling class to the actual linkage class. So I'm wondering what purpose do they actually serve? Can we not just inline all of these fields into the base linkage class? It's not like we copy them around at all. Um, linkage classes are instantiated once per, per uh, type of linkage. Yeah, but uh, you see in, in risk five and pretty much I'm pretty sure that in, in error 64, it would be the same case. Uh, 
you uh, you have it static, so that's that's a shared among all the all the uh, all the instances of all the linkages. I mean, right, but it's just a set of fields, right? Why don't we just put the right? fields in the linkage class? Is my question, yes, I guess. Those, those are the data fields, so you don't have to fill it fill it each time you create an instance of a linkage, which uh, I believe you do. Um, you do pretty much each time you instantiate a compilation, right? So you know the idea. The idea was was to use that approach that was already there uh, and say essentially that the linkage properties uh, is what is immutable uh, during the lifetime of uh, of the linkage. Those are just shared data. Make sense. So, Philip, um, you're proposing you're proposing um, either making the linkage properties uh, a subclass of system link or of linkage, or mm -hmm. just embedding the fields from the properties class in the linkage hierarchy itself. The latter. Um, yeah. The way okay. I see it, the linkage properties is just. A bunch of fields, um, and it's asking questions like, okay, what is the first integer argument register? What is preserved? What is um, volatile? Um, these to me are just things that we can store in the linkage. Um, I don't think there's a need to complicate having another extensible class sibling to the linkage class when we can already do everything with the linkage class itself. Yeah, I guess doing it that way, you would would promote some of the um, sharing that an extension that that Yan has been talking about as well, right? Because you, you just sort of get that naturally as the linkage hierarchy is extended. That's right. Um, I don't I, I think we're introducing extra complexity by having this linkage property extensible class as a sibling to all the other linkages, which are also extensible. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember if there's a reason why. So, I mean, this code, so the linkage the, the 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 base linkage class and the linkage properties this is like some of the earliest code that was ever written in the compiler so it it definitely is um predates a lot of the other stuff that's around and it's also code that hasn't really changed in in all that time um so i don't even remember what some of the reasoning was behind creating a separate um system linkage properties class um I know in, there are places in the code where we actually create a, we actually do pull it out into a variable and then we ask that variable questions about the properties, but I don't know why we couldn't just do that on the linkage. Yeah, the, the uh, linkage properties is stored on the linkage, so you could just ask the linkage itself. Um, yeah. That's what I've saw from the code when I looked at this. Well, we can, we can certainly, certainly do that, uh, but uh, then we have to keep, uh, keep this in mind, right? Uh, as I said, if if it's inlined or embedded uh, in the linkage code, then you cannot uh, cannot have this data structure or this bunch of fields shared among, right? <clears throat> so um, why is that? You would have to initialize. Well, well, you can make them static all, but then how to initialize them? In a in a concise way, and uh, if you don't if you don't share them, uh, and you will use you know my my code then sorry uh, where, where is the image? So the problem then, you're trying to solve is that if I just summarize the problem you're trying to solve is that for different linkages that you think that most of the register settings are going to be the same between those different linkages. You just want to simply set this static on each of those linkages so that you only have to do the initialization essentially once. Yes, um, that's the idea yeah. of having having it uh, having it static. Uh, also, if you have it static, then here you know you see you iterate over all registers, uh, which might be a little bit wasteful if if only eight registers out of uh, thirty two uh, are argument registers. But if uh, uh, if you do it only once, you know when when the whole 
code gets loaded into the memory, uh, then uh, you know the, the the price you pay for this uh, is probably well amortized. If you if you would have to do it uh, each time you instantiate the the compilation, uh, then you maybe do not want this, and you would have to resort what we have right now into just uh, having manually hard code uh, values there because that's the that's the fastest way to get it to get it down. Uh, I'm not sure I expressed myself clearly, but uh, so I guess to um, summarize, I guess the concern is um, we're paying the cost once per compilation rather than once per the lifetime of the application. Is that the concern? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, so you know, for, for risk five, this uh, this uh, works quite fine. Uh, I also uh, I also went and tried to do it for power. Uh, even though I am not much of a power expert, uh, but um, yeah, the power looked more complicated, uh, and I wanted to see how how it looks when when you try to use the common stuff and then extend uh, and uh, see how how it's done in power. And in power, it's actually not that nice. Uh, I didn't I did I didn't have enough time to to think how to make it even nicer. But uh, still, you saved quite a bit of code on power, right? So here we go to the power linkage, uh, and we have we have all this, and we have all this. So you see that the that the power linkage um, has all the bases, but also on power you have these vector registers, and then you have this funny. Uh, first allocatable integer argument register uh, members uh, and uh, you know on power we have these condition registers also and uh, and TOC and all the, all these kind of things so here you see uh, that you basically extend extend the value sorry extend the extend the structure with with what you need uh, and also, also you implement uh, this initialize, like you call the initialize of you know, of the supper class, and then you just uh, you just continue with with your own initialization. Um, so this is an this is kind of a proof that uh, you can extend the. You can extend and accommodate for uh, for specifics, and also this uh, this gives us mechanism how to get how to get the J nine specific properties out of this one big property because uh, because then the J nine linkage uh, J nine private linkage would just add these uh, into it uh, just like like it's done here right but it would be in the J nine code not in the OMR code. If that's desirable, I'd say it is, but uh, obviously it depends on the cost. Uh, so with this, uh, I tried that only on a 64-bit uh, uh, Little Endian power on Linux, uh, and uh, it does pass all tests that passed before. So still, uh, still kind of works. There is a one complication, and that's it. That I couldn't make it, uh, couldn't make the linkage property static in the in the system linkage. And I will show you why. Uh, this, you know, it's it's kind of difficult to work with the with the PowerPC system linkage because um, we never could make it work. In I mean. It, it just generates some weird code that crashes in one way or another. Uh, 
So this is pretty much a blind uh, refactoring. But the problem, problem here why it cannot be static is uh, that essentially, essentially what, what we done in, in risk five is that we, <clears throat> that we move this into the constructor of the linkage properties, all this code. But we cannot do it easily here because uh, here is all conditional. Uh, and in the static constructor, uh, or in the constructor that is called for a static variable, uh, we cannot access the compilation and target and everything. Uh, so uh, I am not 100% sure how to deal with, with that. We're also going to get the same problem on x86 and z because we have 32-bit support there as well. Yeah, but on x86, there are two, uh, two directories, right? There is this AMD64 and I... Uh, oh, okay, right. We split it there. Um, on z, we do the same as power. Uh, on z, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I don't, but anyway, this is uh, the power. The power is uh, complicated enough to uh, to demonstrate demonstrate the issue. Uh, one way one way would be would be having uh, uh, having like a, uh, three different classes uh, for system linkage properties, like a thirty two bit uh, AIX, thirty two bit Linux. Uh, 64-bit uh, Linux, 64-bit AIX, uh, and also uh, now I learned, uh, thanks to Boris, that there is yet another ABI of Motorola, which which is used on some 32-bit uh, powered PCs uh, of our interest, um, which I don't think is ac accommodated here. Uh, but again, I would say if we if we do if we go this way. And if you know all three of them all the time as a static, and here he will just choose which one we, we set into the non static variable, I mean, the reference to which one, um, it would probably make it, make it much easier to, to read because then we won't have these conditionals and if and force inside this kind of a definition thing, right? Mm, I don't know, or or we can just leave it leave it like uh, as it is. If we cannot make it static, um, that's up to discussion. I don't have I don't have a proper answer. I don't like the way it's done right now, but uh, that's where I where I hit the wall with my great idea of having having them static. Um, I'm, I'm trying to. I, sorry, Daryl. Go, go on. Go ahead, Boris. No, no, you go ahead, Boris. Okay, um, I have uh, big doubts about that whole thing, you know, on every line when you say, well, we cannot really uh, look that, uh, we, we cannot really compute that statically, like that uh, is little Indian or where was the line that, that you just showed us. Um, I have a general discontent about even having that because that's like pretending that we have cross jitting or well cross compilation that never worked. And, and when you try uh, looking at it, for example, uh, if I try to uh, cross jit, uh, uh, from, I don't know, uh, little Indian power to big Indian power um the whole structure of the code has got much bigger problems than th th than any of this so i don't see uh why we even have that 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 should all be uh, defined uh, compiler co constants at, at compilation time that uh, just are defined early enough that this problem about well we cannot st we we cannot have this statically, it just it's it's a non problem because that field is uh, it, it is defined at, at compile time. So you can just you know you can just go hash uh, if def uh, little Indian or or something like that and pretending 
that you have that dynamically defined and changeable because you can dynamically uh, cross compile. Um, we cannot. And saying that, oh, we will, we will fix uh, this uh, someday and, and we will have, well, I guess that will require so much change in the code base that talking about it today is, well, it simply doesn't make sense. Yeah, sure. I mean, if dev is another another way how to how to deal with that, uh, and if we go if we go by if devs, then we can do the same thing and risk five and have them static. Yes, Boris. Just just so I understand what you were um, proposing, uh, your your thinking is that the entire property should simply just be a constant, or that they should all just be constants, and. Um, there shouldn't be a need to update them during initialization at all. There should be a, um, a one representation for each kind of linkage that we want to to to, to have. Um, no, that's not what it... I said. Uh, Jan, on your screen, can you go to that uh, if uh, indirect, indirect, indirect is uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yes. Yes, is big endian. What I am saying is that dynamic uh, redirection from compilation to target to CPU to is big endian makes no sense. I mean, you could, but you always know whether it is is big endian or not. Now, I'm not advocating against what you just said, right? That these things should be just static constants. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a different thing. Jan's problem was that we cannot conditionally uh, uh, or with a small int parms alignment aligned ri right dependent on is big endian because in a static uh, um, constructor or what you call it, you don't have access to is big endian. But that is simply because right now, this whole construction about is big endian being dynamic part of uh, target of the comp uh, um, is, is pretending that we can dynamically cross compile. We cannot. When you say we, you mean the compiler in general or risk the compiler? No, no, the compiler uh, in general. Right. So, the compiler uh, in general can has has uh, has, and and this is quite a different. This is quite a different issue, quite orthogonal to to uh, the linkages. Is that uh, the compiler has a number of dynamic properties uh, about the, the, the dynamic knowledge about uh, the target of the compilation, which is indeed static. There shouldn't be anything dynamic about it. Because okay, so falsely, the compiler falsely pretends that it can cross compile. It cannot. Um, okay, so some of this code is um, is historical. So um, where where this code where some of those kinds of changes were introduced was back at a time when cross compilation was certainly a possibility. We could run uh, we could run on x eighty six hardware and generate. Um, code for a power PC um, machine. So that was certainly a possibility. Um, the, the, a, a lot of that functionality um, sort of eroded over time and we're at, we're kind of at a state where um, it likely doesn't work. Uh, that, that is not a path that, that, that actually works. And in fact, when we re-architected the code to open source, um, we, I think we deliberately had to make a choice about whether or not we were going to support cross compilation and the answer was no just to make the 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 open sourcing easier however i think looking forward uh cross compilation is not going to be off the table um if you look at some of the technologies that we have um available to the compiler so for example the jit server comp comp uh, uh, compilation approach where compilate the, the the compilation can actually be separated from um, the language environment itself, um, perhaps even on, on a different architecture, there may be some cross compilation um, use cases in the future. So 
um, we don't necessarily want to preclude that. And if we we're going to uh, support the the notion of having a, a target different from the host that you're compiling on, then we do need those kinds of checks in the code still. And I don't think that we can make them if defs in order to support that. Okay. So now I am really happy because uh, I mean it's it's diverging very far from today's topic, but uh, at least uh, we've got uh, you know some concrete talking about well what exactly the goals of OMR are here, and I'm very happy to hear that yes this something that uh, would be important for our use case at at, at Labware. Um, okay. is, is uh, you know, so, so then we, we just say, okay, no, uh, we're not throwing out uh, cross conversion completely. It's just something that doesn't work today. Right. So there is actually an issue that we've started. It's probably a couple of years ago now. And it's, it's a it's sort of an epic issue. I, I can dig it up for you. Um, that really describes some of the starting sets of work that we're going to need to do in order to support cross compilation. In, in in the compiler and um, like I said, because it wasn't really something that we, it was used early on and then we went through this period where it wasn't used and then um, the the as a result of that, a lot of the support essentially eroded, but you'll still see lots of it in the code. Like for example, where we check the target dynamically or if you see or if you see macros in the code where we're checking to see if the host is one kind of an architecture or the target is another kind of architecture, those are all left over from the days where we did where we did cross compilation. So um, if we do something like that in the future, we're going to have to, I think, put in a fairly, um, um, we're going to have to essentially overhaul the entire um, compiler here to understand how like what what's correct and what isn't correct and uh, and and to make it so so that issue that i that i mentioned uh, that i can dig up for you um does touch on some of that um but uh it, it's i mean you, um, you're right it, it's still a, a goal of this project to eventually be able to support um cross compilation it's just unfortunately we just don't, haven't had the, the the opportunity to to make those changes Um, right, so I was thinking, I was trying to think in my mind what some of the motivations could have been for separating the linkage properties into a separate class um, originally. And I think that one of the original motivations from that would have been that when you're looking at two uh, calling conventions that are very similar to each other. And I'll go back to that time. Um, what was around at that time, you'd look at 32 bit. Windows versus 32 bit Linux. They're very similar, but they have some subtle differences in terms of like how you handle. Um, the value being returned from the stack and whose responsibility is it to clean up the stack on, on, on a call. Um, they're largely the same, except a couple of properties are different. I think the goal there was to produce a sort of a, a, a common, and I'll just pick system linkage, let's say pick a, a system linkage that had the same sort of logic, identical logic for Windows and Linux, but the difference was the properties class. You could define a Linux specific property class, or you could define a Windows specific property class. and depending upon what the settings were in those different properties um the 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 common linkage implementation would do different things at, at the different points right so oh I'm, i need to clean up the stack here or i need to push this value now or, or that kind of thing so i think the intention was to produce these linkage properties that you could you could change um, the code would stay the same but the the properties would be different so I think if we're going to try to understand what the right way to architect, to re-architect um, linkage and linkage properties, I think we need to think of what role do we wanna have, what are we trying to accomplish with having a separate linkage properties? 
because if we go the approach that that perhaps Philip was advocating, that suggests that um, that properties aren't shared in that way. They're shared more through the sharing of or, or the, the 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 subclassing of, of of the linkage hierarchy. Whereas if you did want to have sort of a um, a single method that would behave differently depending upon the properties that you fed into it. That would perhaps favor a, a linkage properties approach. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure yet which way I would favor. I'd have to give some thought to the pros and cons of of the different um, approaches and what we were hoping to accomplish. Just looking at the oh, Z. Uh, linkage class, it's, it looks like we have conditionals based on the processor as well, because we don't have vector registers up until a certain processor version. So that definitely can't be made static. Well, to be honest, I, I still kind of uh, prefer to have a linkage, linkage property separate to uh, one reason is yeah, you can you can share them, and you know that's you know the the difference, the telling difference. What is the linkage properties and what is the linkage, is um, the linkage properties uh, are static immutable data, pretty much. Same for for all. Also, uh, another reason for me to to make them separate is that uh, the linkage class is usually a monster in itself and putting more legs onto it would make it you know even more monsters uh, so i i kind of i i know that is not a not a, not a solid technical argument uh, just yeah the, the way i see it um with the way that you've done things with the linkage Class on risk five. Um, I guess I'm I'm trying to understand. Are there unique requirements that you have on risk five that you were trying to solve with the way that you did it? So, for example, is um, the savings that you, is is whatever start uh, startup time savings that you're getting is that is that is it really that critical on risk five? I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just trying to understand. If, no, no, no. You know, I, I shouldn't probably have even talked about about that saving. Uh, I was I was driven by uh, merely by reducing uh, the code duplication, pretty much. Okay. So you know, I didn't want to copy paste stuff here and there. Uh, also, uh, if if you look about the linkage properties on AR sixty four. They are pretty much the same. I mean, if not exactly the same. I think recently, recently the allocation order was added, uh, and I I haven't done that yet. Uh, but still, uh, the code was copy paste, and uh, and the same thing uh, can be used for i64. So if I do it this way, uh, then I believe uh, you know in ten minutes. I can just delete uh, 150 lines of code from from uh, AR64 backend, and uh, in turn, in you know another uh, 50 or 60 lines of code in the J9 in the J9 J9's AR64 private linkage, because then I will only set the register flex and a few other bits, uh, and then call initialize to to do the rest. So that was the that was the primary. Primary motivation. I didn't want to contribute to and add another uh, copy pasted code uh, if I could avoid it. The savings, yeah, and the memory savings. That's probably probably just a nice side effect because at one point I was just like, okay, and now I can make it static, and it, it would just work. Yeah, I, and and uh, first of all, I'll I'll thank you for that. It's a very um, I'm glad I'm very happy to see that you're you're 
you're you're considering that kind of thing. It's it's certainly a problem that, um, and you've obviously you're seeing it here with the with the way the linkage class has evolved over the last twenty years, and with the with the different directions that um, different architectures or even different operating systems have have chosen to 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 take it. So um, it is. Um, you know, they share a lot of the same DNA, but I think you can see that they've, they've diverged in, in, in a few areas. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that you're, you're trying to make an, an effort here to try and curtail, um, uh, some of that. Um, I think the, um, 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 we do need to give some thought as a, as a group on what it is that we're trying to, like, how, how these. I think deciding on what it is that we're trying to, how we want these linkage classes to behave will determine what some of the architectural choices are that we make. Like, do we need a separate class for the properties? Um, should they be, do we need to, um, like, how do we encourage more sharing across different linkages? Things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, and what, and what the best way of doing that is, um, I, I, I mean, I, I think that you're not going to get many arguments, and somebody please step up and, and argue that startup time is important. So we should try to minimize that as much as possible. Sharing as much of it as possible would be um, um, would be ideal as well. Um, allowing a new linkage to be formed from an existing linkage, like just by making some subtle changes to it, would be would be nice to have uh, as well. Um, sharing even across different architectures may be a possibility as well. Um, I'm not so convinced of that one though, but um, um, but but still, it's it's something maybe to put on the table. Um, Actually, I, I, let me take that one back. There are some very common operations that occur in linkages that um, um, that that definitely would be shared. So, for example, for a particular uh, language environment, how do you map values onto the stack? Right, like there might be uh, a lot of similar code there that would be shared across the different architectures. How do you um, map a single element on the stack? That that, that could be something that gets shared. Uh, as as well, and I think you could probably go through the the list of functions that make up these different components and and, and find some that could definitely be shared between the different um, linkages. Um, so I think we kind of need to build up a list of what it is that we're hoping to achieve, and then sort of seeing where the architecture, how the best way to architect that is. To be honest, here I just started with the with the linkage properties. But you know, as I was as I was looking at how they are used, uh, I could see many opportunities in in other code in the linkage itself, not in the properties, in the linkages itself, uh, that can be, you know, shared um, by by just you know splitting into multiple pieces, like having you know this this sort of template methods and then smaller uh, smaller stuff. So, so I think yep. there is a great potential. And uh, I guess in the end, and that's that's a rough estimate, and maybe maybe too optimistic, but I guess uh, we can save up to thirty percent of the code in each backend by by doing this. Yeah, I, I think that's that, that's that's definitely a, um, a a worthwhile direction to go in, um, and we're trying to do that not just in the linkage class, but across the board, across the different code generators, try to share as much as we can. Um, there are some very um, um, seemingly minor reasons why a lot of that is is somewhat challenging to do at the moment. And I know that uh, myself and I know Philip has been chipping away at at, at little bits of it as well, um, trying to make it easier for code to be shared across the the, the different code gen. So just as an example. Um, you know, if, if, um, um, if the, uh, like what the register enum is in some cases would prevent, because every architecture used to have their own enum, that kind of thing would prevent sharing of a, of a real register across the different backends. 
Um, and that does, of course, spill into the linkage code. Um, you've got a PR open, I believe, right now for copy just copy parameters to home location or something like that. That code is, I think, there's even an issue open for commenting this up. That code, I think, is pretty much identical across every architecture, uh, except ARM, the 32-bit ARM. It's the only one out. So there's no reason why that code, for example, couldn't just be shared. Um, so we need to go through and 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 map some of these linkage functions into common ones that can be shared across the different um, architectures. So um, so uh, I right. guess well I, I I'm trying to understand then what the next step here is for the work that you've done here. Um, I mean, just given the precedent that we have with linkages kind of going their own way um, already, like for the last N number of years, I, I wouldn't say that this, like what you've done here is is not, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that this is code that we wouldn't want to accept. I mean, it's, it, it's just done a different way, just like every other architecture has done it. Um, but uh, uh, you know, certainly some of the ideas you have on on sharing, I think, could be um, perhaps could be taken into account too. Well, from my point of view, there are, there are two two things, right? Uh, as I was working on uh, the first few commits, just did everything. I think, yeah, up to here. Uh, they did everything locally in a in a risk five code gen, and I am kind of happy with that code. Uh, and I started I started hacking all this um, because uh, I wanted to do something about it before I start upstreaming the private linkage to J9, right? The, the way I have it right now, it's really hacky, and uh, I don't want to get these hacks. Uh, and horrible code to be upstream, so I started to polishing it here. So the first question is, if uh, if this is okay enough to accept it inside the risk five uh, code gen, and that's something that's I, that's something I can probably you know polish and squash uh, uh, the comments uh, and just upstream. What to do with the rest? Well, that probably needs you know. Uh, for the review of, of the code and for the discussion, uh, because uh, uh, um, I, from, I, from I there I just I just went went uh, as fast as I could uh, to see how far I can go. So the, so the rest is clearly clearly you don't want to get this this merged not at this point. Right? Oh no no I wouldn't hang on I, I wouldn't say that. So I mean I think I think that. Um, um, first of all, um, any re any rearchitecting we do with the linkage class, I think, is going to affect every architecture, and it would be ideal if, and actually, it's, that's how it should be. That every architecture gets changed the same way. Like we should all be doing the same kind of thing. Um, so right now, that means um, a different amount of. Rework that has to happen on X to make that happen a different amount of rework on power on ARG 64. And then even on, on whatever you do in risk 5 is going to have to get rearchitected. I think it would be unfair for the community to tell you, you can't commit this code because you didn't rearchitect. The linkage hierarchy or the linkage properties in order to um, to do it the nice clean way that would be very unfair to you. Um, to put that onus um, on, on on your plate, so uh, I, I think that you're you're definitely giving some good thought here to some to some issues that have to get to, to some of the issues that we have to solve. But I don't think you have to solve all of them in order for you to get your code committed. At least that's my opinion. Um, uh, at some point in the future, when when we start to pull everything, when we start to make everything. Um, more consistent, this code is just going to have to be some of that code that gets rearchitected at that time, along with every other backend that we have. Uh, I don't want to impede. I don't want to. I don't 
want the community to be impeding your progress too much um, because we put a, an unreasonable bar for you to, to, to clear in order to get this code merged. That's my opinion. If others have different views, please speak up. I'm okay with that as well. Um, I think we just have to be open um, if we have to make if we have to backtrack on some of the things that we chose um, in the future, because um, we, not, we, may, we may not be able to port um, all the stuff that RISC-5 did on, for example, Power or, or Zed. Yeah. Yeah. So is this, um... Is this pull request that you have, is this um, uh, um, a, a representative of what the real code that you want to commit looks like, meaning that it's it's ready for review and possible merge? No, no, that's, it really that's just a, it's, it's just a proof of concept that you wanted to show some ideas with. That's a, that's a proof of concept. Uh, I, and I opened the pull request just an easy way to give you, give you a way how to look at the code. So, I would say, uh, and you know, the pull request is just a draft. I never, I never, uh, you know, intended this at this point uh, right. to be merged or even even attempted uh, to be merged. So, for the code that you actually want to, the there are few commits at the beginning which only only does some some uh, some refactoring on Risk Five because I needed for upstreaming other stuff. So this is something I would like to see merged in in foreseeable future. And I, I can certainly make a make a separate uh, normal PR uh, and get it reviewed. Uh, and maybe we can we can drop some of the some of the more radical changes like making the linkage properties uh, member static uh, or things like this. Uh, but uh, you know, this is this is something that doesn't affect anyone, other than risk five, and I th still think is within the within the boundaries and tolerations of you know how how the different backends uh, backends differ. Uh, the rest, like hoisting hoisting the common properties into the common cogen and things like this, this is a big. Uh, big piece and would need uh, a lot more work and a uh, lot more thinking and this rabbit hole goes really deep uh, so uh, um, that's, that's something for future just to start thinking when when i was already on it i just did it okay. to see. Uh, can someone that's familiar with the code remind me um is linkage pro and perhaps yeah and you're the you're the person to do it uh, is linkage properties right now in the base OMR linkage class, or does it only exist in the that first architecture layer, like it would be in the in the in the power uh, power linkage, or x86 linkage, or risk five linkage? Is that where the first occurrence of the linkage properties is? Guess I can go look myself. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because if you, if, if risk five decided that the way that you wanted to implement this was to make the linkage property static, that would be a decision that you make in the risk five specialization of the linkage hierarchy. So you're certainly free to do it that way. If that's the way that you wanted to do it. Uh, excellent. Uh, I mean, the linkage properties are in. Each backend as a new new stuff. They don't they don't have anything they take from the common base. As far as I see. Yeah, I'm just looking at least on x86. They yeah, there there is no properties in the in the base class. So making that a static is the way that. Um, I mean that that could be the way that you do that now. Um, but uh, as as Philip was saying, some of these decisions may get revisited in the future as we do a proper 
and a more consistent re-architecting of the linkage code across all architectures. So even though it's static right now and lives in risk five, maybe in the future it'll still be static, but actually live a bit higher up the up the chain. Um, yeah, sure. Or you know, I can I can easily drop the the change to make it static. It's just you know these few few lines of code. If you can still see my screen. So yeah, but uh, you know that's that's something we can discuss on the PR once I once I open it. Okay. Um, yeah, properties are not not uh, cogent common. Yeah, they're yeah they live in the okay. Um, just so you know, in case you hadn't seen it, I did create a linkage epic. Uh, must have been about three years ago now, in the OMR project that um, is was there to track some of the work that we need to do in order to. Um, um, uh, Rearchitect the linkage essentially, and over the years, I've been adding various issues to it, or I've been tagging various issues there, just to track some of the evolution of 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 the code as we as we go on. So, feel free to look at that. Add add any thoughts you have to to that body of of issues um, as we go forward. At some point, you know, uh, I don't know when, uh, just uh, but at some point in the future, I would like to spend some time with everyone just going through a different uh, uh an architecture for the for the linkage hierarchy itself um but uh may not happen um, anytime soon so okay okay i'll try to have a look yeah, thanks for uh, taking us through this uh yan it's uh and and for thinking about some of the issues that you're thinking about it's uh it's really nice to nice to see that you're trying to make the code better than than it than it currently is. That's great. Um, are there any other questions for um, Jan on this particular one? Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have a I have a question for Boris, if you if you don't mind. Um, you you mentioned that um, cross compilation uh, or having the ability to do cross compilation. Um, is aligned with some of the interests that you have. Um, um, are you able That's to correct. elaborate on? Are you able to elaborate on that at all? Like, what? How? Uh, how do you foresee using cross compilation in your um, in your environment? Uh, it is for bootstrapping of uh, a small talk uh, kernel that we have. So uh, it's essentially if you, if you want to bootstrap uh, the, like, uh, the idea is to AOT uh, the, the lowest level base classes and and once you have that um, in a native processor form then you, the rest of the system you, you you have a JIT which is which is not like OMR or what we were doing but is 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 a metacircular JIT that lives inside the image itself. Um, but, uh, in order to be able to bootstrap, say, for, uh, PowerPC Big Endian, uh, the only way is, uh, to have a, a running system on something else, like, I don't know, on your Intel desktop, for example. And the idea is that you bootstrap a, a PowerPC system by AOTing, uh, uh, your kernel image from your Intel desktop. And uh, you know, for that, uh, you need to, to you need to actually cross compile, not just cross build, right? Because if you simply cross build, then you have an AOT compiler or JIT compiler or you know whatever, right? You have a compiler that bootstraps uh, from PowerPC, but you don't have a small talk image that will call that and feed it the base class hierarchy that you are trying to AOT in the first place. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So when I, when I was looking at, at, uh, at the compiler and I was like, okay, well, there is a whole bunch of flags here in, in make, and there is a whole bunch of ifs, uh, and there is a whole bunch of runtime structures uh, in the code itself uh, that allows for, for cross compilation, but there is like basic things like when you 
when you uh, binary encode an instruction, you just uh, left to right uh, or the different fields, and uh, there is no attempt to byte swap uh, when you're doing cross Indian. And I was searching the code and trying to grab on different, uh, you know, likely keywords. And I wasn't finding anything like, well, how do you, you know, how do you byte swap when you do, when you do a, a, a cross compile? And I was, and I was looking at the code visually as well. And it was like, okay, well, there is not even an attempt to, to, to do anything like that. And, and, you know, when, when there is uh, a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, usual suspects, right? What you, what you need to be doing when, when you are dynamically cross compiling and uh, they weren't there and i was like okay well this was a couple of years ago so okay uh this is really too bad uh so we cannot use this to cross aot our small talk so we're gonna go you know some other way and 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 we used some resources to to do this uh, bootstrapping aot completely uh, not using OMR and, and, uh, you know, that was based on, um, this impression that, okay, well, we just don't have cross compilation because, well, fundamentally, yeah, there are some, there are some bits that, that try to do it, but then there are fundamental bits that are missing and, uh, um. I just want to mention, okay. uh, Boris, in, in the past, we have supported cross compilation on Z. Um, so what you spoke about, uh, byte swapping, um, when we encode stuff on, on Z and search for BOS, I put it in the chat uh, there on, on the yeah, okay, okay. We swap okay. the bytes yeah. dynamically. All right. Um, yeah. 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 I, I think you'll, you'll find a sort of a, a, an incomplete implementation in the, in, in the compiler right now. And one of the things that, uh, I think this was a discussion topic and some issue not that long ago. Um, where um, the the agreement was that the best way that I think we 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 can the best way to go about reintroducing cross compilation support is to not to try to fix what's already there, but to sort of take a take a, a fresh approach to it and try to understand all the different places that would need to get changed to support cross compilation and then make sure that the the support is essentially there. So basically, starting from scratch. Uh, just because the code had gone so stale, but um, some of the places that do have checks for target or checks for the host, um, they would obviously uh, still be there in a in a in a in, in a in a cross compilation world. But uh, um, um, but uh, yeah, more work for sure needs to get done there. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that uh, that use case uh, with us. It's good to know that there are, um, you know, other than let's say a, a, a JIT server kind of environment, it's good to know that there's um, there are other use cases of this as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We were uh, we were quite uh, dependent on this, uh, and and then it was a very large disappointment to see the code in the in the state that it that it was. Edit. So it's 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 really happy to uh, you know to hear that that we have not killed this completely. This no, is something that yeah, uh, it's I mean unfortunately it's just a matter of just getting um, people's time to look at it and uh, um, it just uh, hasn't been um, the priority at this point. But uh, it's certainly we're not precluding it at all. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. So we have uh, one more topic to discuss. Uh, very important topic. Um, Philip, do you want to uh, take us through this? Sure. Uh, we'll make this pretty quick. Um, so uh, Eclipse, uh, the Eclipse organization is the uh, their IT folks are the ones who manage the Genie Omar uh, GitHub account. Um, and it seems they have deleted that user ID um, and are replacing it with, I think, Eclipse Omar bot or something like that. I think they're in the transition of 
doing that for all the projects. Um, so basically, we can't add that user anymore, which was a very quick way to launch builds or Jenkins builds on our PRs. Um, although the, the the trigger is only based off the name Genie Omar, so you didn't really need the at at all uh, to trigger those builds, but it was a pretty convenient way of doing so. Um, so I guess this is a good point to kind of come back to the community and ask um, if we want to change that moving forward to a different keyword, or do we still stick with uh, Genie Omar, or do we change it to something completely different? Um, and I guess Adam is here on the call as well. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, Adam. Yeah, I just I guess I'll just say so it the the trigger's not based off the at like you said, it's just the keyword. So the having the at was just a convenience thing so that it would auto fill in for you. So we don't have to have um the at there, but it's nice to have. There is the other convenient feature is having the um saved replies in your Jenkins con or, sorry, in your GitHub configure so that you can just click the little drop down and have like saved uh, trigger messages in there, which is what I do for like the copyright checks and stuff like that for the Open J9 project. Um, so it, the trigger causes a bit of confusion because everybody thinks it's linked to the to the bot account, but it's really not. Um, so we can either leave it as is as Genie Omar, or we can link it to the new name or some other name or some other trigger altogether, which doesn't have an ad. So it's really up to you guys. Well, I don't want to leave it as Genie Omar. Personally, uh, I'm fine with what we're going with right now, or I'm fine with just going with Jenkins. Without the ad. Just, yeah, that's just my opinion. Others can have theirs. I personally prefer Jenkins as well, but I guess I'm biased too. Right. Well, there's no dissension, so it's, uh, we do have to communicate that to the, um, to the committer list though. So once we make that change, people have to know how to launch builds again. Okay. Would you be interested in me working the regex so that it would accept both? I, or is that? Uh, I I'd say no. We okay. don't really need to complicate this. Okay. Yeah, with communication, we should be able to solve this pretty efficiently. I agree. So, Just switch it. So Jenkins build all or whatever platform you want. Okay. Yep. Find me. Do you want me to just do Slack announcements or is there is there a mailing list for Omar? There's the Omar dev list, um, which I'm not sure how widely I think you're probably gonna get a wider audience just posting on just post on the general channel of um OMR. Okay. Of the Omar Slack. Uh, pretty much every committer is gonna see that. Okay. Yeah, we'll do like a warning and then like a week later or something hard. I think people will realize as soon as their build doesn't launch. Uh, yeah. yeah. Playing. I would say, I would say just do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. That was our last topic for this week. So uh, I've created the uh, empty agenda for uh, two weeks time. So if anybody has any topics they want to propose, please add them to that. Uh, agenda then. Um, otherwise, uh, I think we're done for today. So thanks everyone for attending. And we'll talk again in two weeks. Bye. Thanks. All.